Happy WrestleMania week. In today's video, we got tons of news stories, so I'll put the timestamps in the description down below. But the first one is Stacey Keebler. Yes, she's officially in the WWE Hall of Fame. And yes, this was something we talked about prior because it was something that was leaked prior to the official announcement. Uh, obviously, big news here for Stacey Keebler. A hell of a run in WCW and WWE. Always going to be one of the biggest names known uh, prior to the Divas era, prior to the women's evolution. In order for the women's evolution to actually exist in the WWE, you have to look back at the times where Stacey Keebler was in the WWE and the women's roster at that time. And honestly, I just thought this was a good move. I thought this was great that WWE is celebrating her. I thought this is a good thing for Stacey Keebler as well. It would always be nice to see her being more involved in wrestling, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. Uh, but I do look forward to her speech. The Hall of Fame this year is definitely a questionable direction that they're going in. Definitely less, uh, less inductees, it seems. But we'll see how it goes. I hope WWE knocks it out of the park with the Hall of Fame because, as always, Triple H is implementing changes, which then brings me to our next topic of today's video. And this story is actually very interesting because you may have heard that WWE is placing a larger emphasis on the Andre the Giant Battle Royal this year. Now, there has been tons of talk about the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, and I'm just going to break it down for you guys. Sean Ross Sapp from Fightful Select dropped this report that WWE is planning to hype up this year's Andre the Giant Battle Royal during Raw this week. Names like Bobby Lashley, Johnny Gargano, Rick Boogs, Dolph Ziggler, and many more will be in this match. So anybody who's backstage or anybody who's involved in this match that could potentially be on Raw uh, will have some sort of emphasis on uh, on television. Now, I want to make this very, very clear because I think the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, uh, it gets a lot of negative flack. And I understand that a lot of fans just are reactionary to things and they don't pay attention to things. But there was a time period when people would complain about who was on the kickoff show. And now people are complaining that there is no kickoff show. People are not consistent with their views. When it comes to WWE's kickoff show. Now, I personally wish that WWE had matches on the kickoff show because of the fact that it just allows more people to wrestle in front of the WrestleMania crowd. That is it, right? It just gives people who may have not been on the main card an opportunity to wrestle. However, WWE doing the Andre the Giant Battle Royal two years in a row on SmackDown allows WWE to give it some emphasis and to give it some meaning as well. So instead of just being another kickoff match or just another match at WrestleMania with no meaning whatsoever, maybe doing this every year on SmackDown right before WrestleMania could actually make it more impactful. Also, you can use this to create matches or storylines or something going into post-WrestleMania or WrestleMania, the event in general. So there are a lot of benefits from for doing this on SmackDown. I also want to make it very clear with the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, I would like WWE to place emphasis on it in a sense of maybe you win, you get something really cool. There's rumors that if you win this match, you can choose a championship opportunity of your choice. There's a lot of rumors on something that WWE might end up doing. There's been no confirmation on that. But the idea that WWE is looking at making the Andre the Giant Battle Royal a little bit more important than normal is a good thing. And that is something I definitely support. I do prefer WWE doing kickoff show matches, in my opinion. I just think it makes more sense. For whatever reason, WWE has decided not to do that, and WWE is just going to continue doing these types of matches on SmackDown. But the cool thing is, if you're watching Raw, especially tonight on March 27, 2023, then there might even be a little bit more emphasis on it tonight. And that's just a really good thing in general. It should feel a little bit more special, uh, especially when you think back to the legendary career of Andre the Giant. So yeah, I think this is a win for WWE. There's always ways to improve things, but... I want to see in what other ways they can implement things to make it a little bit more special because that would be a pretty big deal. Guys, Cody Rhodes recently revealed in a new interview that coming back to WWE and leaving AEW for WWE is actually a far bigger gamble than doing the 2018 All-In event. Uh, according to an interview with AP News, Cody Rhodes opened up about his pro wrestling career over the past few years. And more specifically, he mentioned that leaving AEW to go to WWE is a bigger gamble than going and starting the all-in pay-per-view. He said, when I left my former gig to come back to WWE, it was a far bigger gamble than all-in ever was. That's why I get these all-in vibes when I think about WrestleMania, because I certainly could have been the laughingstock of the industry. And going into the biggest sports of uh, biggest event ever in the wrestling ring from any measurable standpoint is one part of life being great, blessed, and lucky. The other part is I have my family in terms of Brandy and Liberty. For them to come to this and experience this knowing 
uh, that it wasn't a life wasted. Every sacrifice I've made, every morning gym trip, times I wasn't able to be home or won't be able to be home, it's not a life wasted in what we do, and that makes this run just all the sweetest. So here's the thing. Uh, I know a lot of people on Twitter have already reacted to this and have already spewed negative words towards Cody Rhodes for saying this. But if you actually think about it, it is true. Uh, Cody Rhodes, Kenny Omega and them, if they threw all in and it didn't sell out 10,000 seats, to be honest with you, I mean, I, I think it's very easy to say that those guys at the time could have sold 10,000 seats. You know, I think when you look back at that, I think it was very obvious. They were all very popular. I think it was all very possible. I think Cody Rhodes going to WWE and flopping actually was something that a lot of people really expected. So flopping at an event or launching your own wrestling promotion, possibly burning a bridge there, and then going into WWE to flop, that would look a lot worse. It would be a lot more humiliating and a lot more embarrassing. And truth be told, uh, I think he is right. I think it is a bigger gamble than trying to launch an indie show. Indie show could flop. It's not a big deal. You don't have the money and resources like WWE has, right? But to be launching your own wrestling promotion only for you to leave and then flop in WWE, that would have been really bad. It would have been a really bad look for Cody. And honestly, it would probably prevent a lot more people from AEW to ever go to WWE. So I just want to make it very clear when Cody Rhodes says this, maybe it's best that people just aren't reactionary and just like think for two seconds that, you know, all in could have failed and it would have been fine, right? It wouldn't have been that big of a deal. WWE flopping with Cody Rhodes can impact so much more than Cody Rhodes. There's some truth behind that. Um, also, Cody Rhodes going into WrestleMania. You guys know how I feel about that. It's the match I'm very excited for. Can't wait to see what happens. Can't wait to see what goes down. I'll talk to you guys more about it on my prediction show this week. Um, but now we got to talk about our final news story of the day. Punk is not wanted in AEW. This is what's reportedly being said uh, I, I think this is disgusting, to be honest with you. I, I think this talk about CM Punk and the elite and everything that has been talked about here is just absolutely disgusting. It is not a good look for AEW. It's not a good look for Kenny and the Bucks. It's not a good look for Punk. It's not a good look for Moxley. It's not a good look for Hangman Page. Truth be told, all of these individuals, uh, all of these reports on these individuals and what's going down backstage in the company and Tony Khan isn't publicly doing anything to stop the attention, you know, and I get it. Some people say bad press is still good press, but in my opinion, there is so much he say, she say about everything going on in AEW's backstage drama. It's not good. Okay. He say, she say, just nip it in the bud. Like literally just nip it in the bud. I, I think for me personally, these are all talented people, but now PW torches, Wade Keller comes out and he says, uh, not everybody's against CM Punk, but his support among the upper echelon of AEW's roster has dwindled. Maybe one or two of the top third, top of the third, uh, I'm sorry, maybe one or two of the top third of the roster would want him back. And then there's some younger guys who liked him and just thought, hey, this is a guy I uh, grew up watching and it's cool having him around. But obviously there's a ton of talent who also don't want him there. I just, I just want to make it very clear. Whatever's going on in AEW, whatever this drama is with CM Punk, all the he say, she say, you know, the reports don't help. But I think that's also coming from people in that company who want him gone. And it's just, this is all ridiculous, okay? So if you don't want CM Punk, just let's let's take care of it and let's figure out a solution, you know? And if you want CM Punk, then again, figure out the solution. If he's clear to wrestle, bring him back on TV. Whole bunch of grown adults. There's there, This is the issue. There's a whole bunch of reports about grown adults who are having an issue with a top talent. You guys are a smaller company. If you want your company to grow, you guys got to work together. OK, any company, I don't care if it's WWE, AEW, Impact, MLW, whatever these companies are, different egos, whatever. If you want to make more money, <laughs> it's probably better to do it with everybody collectively. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down below.